Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to spend my $8 on Twitter. Anyway, YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. We got another episode of question from subscribers. Now, I know you see the title. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Let's just... Let's just get into it. First question came from my guy, Juan. He said, and appreciate you being a Team Keep It Clean patron. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you are doing well. Congratulations on your anniversary. Hey, appreciate that. Thank you. It is 10, oh, me and my wife's 10-year anniversary. Oh, uh, wedding anniversary. So I, I appreciate that a lot, man. Thank you. Uh, he said, man, I'm jealous of your Mexico trip. Me and my girlfriend are planning one now. Hey, man, that's probably my favorite place that we went. We was actually, I was kind of bummed, though, man, because... On a little cruise we went when we went on, we were supposed to go to Mexico twice. We were supposed to go to Mexico. Uh, we were supposed to go to Bahamas, Mexico, Honduras, then Mexico again. Um, and then I think that was it. Uh, but because of the, the, the tropical storm that was developing, they made a big announcement. They were like, oh, sorry. Well, because of the storm, we, we won't be able to go to Mexico. I, man, I almost start crying. Like straight up because that's where I wanted to go the most. I almost start crying. But then... Um, they were like, oh, we actually, we're going to be able to go to Mexico for one day, um, but we won't be able to go to Honduras and then Mexico for the second day. So I was still a little bummed, but I was still happy that we did get to go to Mexico. So uh, maybe we take a trip there just by itself. But anyway, enough talk about Mexico. Let's talk about sugar. <laughs> anyway, he said. Um, now to the Ravens, LOL. If you scroll up through our messages, I was talking about Ravens defense and the middle of the field being a little small in size and sort of the weakness of our defense. Not the size and strength that Baltimore is used to. With guys like Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, mid to large size aggressive tacklers that put the fear of God in ball carriers. Ed Reed? Ed Reed, he wasn't big. Ed Reed was not an aggressive tackler. Um, Ed Reed, like, I mean, he played. He played, like, the way he covered the field, you would think that he was, like, 10 foot 3 or something like that because he was every man. I always say it. I always say it, and I got to say it again. If you, like, if you had the chance to watch Ed Reed live, there was nothing like it, man. Like, not even just live in person, but live, like, while the game is being played. Not a highlight, not a replay, but actually watching the game live while it's happening. Ed Reed was just amazing. Um... And I'm, I'm not taking anything away from Ray Lou. I'm just speaking about Ed Reed specifically and only by himself. Ed Reed was just so amazing to watch. He he was the best, man. He was the best. But anyway, um, he said, uh, and ultimately stopped the run and fast guys off the edge to get after the passer. Uh, man, how excited are you with Smith kind of giving us a glimpse of the past of Ray Lewis? Whoa, hold up there, buddy. Hold up there, buddy. The, hey, I like, look, whoa, slow down there. Slow down. Pump the brakes. Whew. Pump the brakes. But he did say, not gonna, he did say, I'm not going to get too ahead of myself, but when I saw him swinging the ball carriers down and getting to the ball with speed and strength, I was excited. We all were. We all were. And um, there's some crazy stat. I forgot exactly what it was. I know uh, I know some of y'all will remember that they put up where it's like Roquan Smith got some crazy stat and the last person that had this crazy stat was Ray Lewis. Now, as far as the comparisons, Roquan Smith to Ray Lewis, I can't do it yet. It's, it's way too early. Um, it was obviously a different generation and whatnot, but still, I, I can't do it yet. We just got to see... Because obviously he's doing this thing over there in Chicago. But now with the Ravens, like, middle linebacker is judged a lot harsher. I know they had Brian Erlacher. Brian Erlacher was not Ray Lewis. Brian Erlacher was still nice, though. He was still nice. He wasn't Ray. Middle linebacker is judged a lot harsher with the Baltimore Ravens than it is in so many other places. And as an inside linebacker, you will always... No matter who you are, and I know it's, it's so unfair. It's so unfair to everybody who comes through and who's came through after Ray Lewis. But you will always be, comp whether you like it or not, whether fans like it or not, whether people like it or not, you will always be compared to Ray Lewis. You always will. It's not fair, but that's just what it is. C.J. Mosley, he was compared to Ray Lewis. 
Patrick Queen, he would be compared to Ray Lewis. Roquan Smith, he would be compared to Ray Lewis. Daryl Smith, he would be compared to Ray Lewis. Everybody who lines up there. Arthur, was it Arthur Smith or Arthur Jones? Was it wasn't not Arthur Jones. Yeah, Arthur Smith. That was his name, right? The second round pick. It didn't work out. But again, anybody who lines up at inside linebacker for the Ravens will be compared to Ray Lewis. They may not live up to the comparisons, but they will be compared because it's something like as Ravens fans who watched Ray Lewis, it is just engraved in our minds. Like Ray Lewis, inside linebacker for the Ravens. All right, how does this guy look compared to him? Even if they don't have the same playing styles or whatnot. Again, it's not fair, but it is what it is. Anyway, um, <laughs> shout out to my guy Juan, man, for starting us off fun. Um, but he said, um, oh, and seeing Houston having his year, Bowser is back out there getting warmed up. That large defensive front and our excellent DBs and our young safety starting to get hyped up. Hamilton almost with his first pick. Ooh. NFL don't like Ravens rookie uh, first round picks. They don't like them. The reason I say that because they love taking stuff away from them when it's their first time. This year, Ravens first round pick, well, their first first round pick, uh, Kyle Hamilton, uh, drafted at 14 overall. Oof, Ravens had a high draft pick. But anyway, um, he finally got his first interception of the year against the Saints. Nice interception. Nice return, too. Hey, don't sleep on Kyle Hamilton's return skills now, too. I said, oh, said, Ooh, okay, man. But anyway, um, they called this really bogus pass interference on Chuck Clark, and it was actually a really bad call. Real terrible call. Terrible, terrible call. So they took it away. I take you back to last year, 2021. Uh Ravens versus the Browns. Um, the second game against the Browns. Uh, so Tyler Huntley was a star at quarterback. Tyler Huntley threw a pass to Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman catches it over the defender, falls into the end zone. Touchdown. Rashad Bateman, his first touchdown of his career. But the NFL said nope. No touchdown. We're going to say you were down at the one. And they took it away from him. Anyway, uh, he said, I am definitely more confident in Super Bowl chances for the Baltimore Ravens now because defense wins championships. And with the injury to Josh Allen, um, and they said he's week to week now, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, the injuries to Bengals wide receiver Chase, uh, Jamar Chase, and their downfall. And the Chiefs. Not being able to move the ball against the Titans the other night made my heart start to race. This bye week is at the absolute most perfect time. Uh, what do you think, man? Um, now, Ravens, hey, you, you said all this about the, the, the Chiefs, the Bills, the Bengals. Ravens, uh, I don't think they beat a team that had a winning record. They lost to the Dolphins, lost to the Bills, lost to the Giants. So... Why, why I'm glad Ravens took care of business against these teams with these losing records. We, we, we got to put everything into its proper place. Now, throughout the rest of the season, the, the records that people have, the, the records that the Ravens opponents have for the rest of the season, it works out in their favor, and they should take full advantage of it because, hey, you, you, you can't control who's on your schedule. You can't. You can only play them. You can only show up and, and do your job. Um, but <laughs> those other teams that the Raven that had them winning records, the Ravens didn't finish the job against them. So that's something to think about, especially um, as you think about the remainder of the regular season, especially as you think about playoffs, because playoffs, that's when everything matters that much more. So we'll see how it goes, my friend. He said, um, and hey, let's not forget. 35-year-old Jackson looked fired up in there, uh, too. It looks like it changed the feel of the other receivers, too. Hey, <laughs> long the Ravens got some, some, some dough bananas on the sideline for Jackson's hamstrings, then, hey, we'll be okay. Yeah, this feels like a dream.
So team, keep it clean. Uh, again, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. What a fun way that my guy Juan got us started off. Now, my guy Phil, and, and shout out to you being a patron as well. Um, he said, uh, after the first four weeks of the season, a lot of fans were complaining about Mike McDonald's new defensive scheme from the way a couple of fourth quarter leads were blown. Since week five, the team has gotten used to his playbook and have had our opponents locked down on the field. Recently, Ian Rappaport sent out a tweet saying the Ravens defense are third in takeaways, fourth in sacks, sixth for lowest third down conversion rate, which is a top five total defense, which you could say is solid under Mike McDonald's debut. What are your thoughts? Yeah, the defense has certainly been a lot better. And, and, and hearing numbers like that, that's just that's just like weird, especially when you think about last year and remember the times from last year. It, it's been good. It's been nice to see. And um, something that we continue to say uh, early on in the season, let's see. It's, it's, it's an adjustment. It's a new scheme. Um, a lot of these players, a lot of them didn't play last year. A lot of them were not. Whether they were on the Ravens last year and were hurt, because that was obviously, obviously, obviously something, excuse me, um, and a lot of them just straight up didn't play last year like that. Um, so, yeah, man, um, it, it's, it's been a lot of adjustments. It's been a lot of, uh, I mean, adjusting and, and getting used to and gelling and clicking and building rapport with one another. Uh, the communication is a lot better. Like, there have been a lot of times early on in the year defensively where guys just look like they ain't know where to line up at. Guys, it, it, you could see the communication issues. Now, there's still been a, a few here and there. Like, there was even, I remember one in the Saints game where I think Chuck Clark, no, Geno Stone was telling somebody to move or so, something like that. I forgot who it was. But anyway, they are not as many, not nearly as many as there were early on in the season. Guys just out of place, just not getting it. So things are, are really starting to, 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 to turn around in a good way. And Ravens not even at full strength yet. I mean, they'll never be at 100% full strength because um, Michael Pierce and Kyle Fuller, those, those guys are out. But um, Stephen Means, too. But uh, Marcus Williams, he'll be coming back, they said, in December. So that's something to look forward to. Um, and, yeah, so it's, it's nice to see uh, the turnaround and the difference from the beginning of the season to where they are now. Next question came from that boy Isaiah. He said, Ain't Graven, would you consider trading any of these players if it was or if it meant to keep Roquan Smith and Lamar Action Jackson here? Uh, Calais Campbell, well, you ain't got to worry about trading him. He's he probably going to retire. Chuck Clark, uh, he probably going to be traded anyway. Uh, Patrick McCary, oh, that'd be an interesting one. But to keep Lamar and, and Roquan, yes. Dalen Hayes, he got released, waived injured release, so he ain't even on the roster now. Anyway, um, Nick Boyle. The Ravens got like a million tight ends anyway. Um, and he said it would clear up $45 million before free agency. Uh, would it clear up that much? I don't know if it would clear up that much. But anyway, he said it would clear, clear up $45 million and before free agency they could end up with $85 million. I already know I'm looking forward to the offseason just in that one game. I can't imagine Roquan Smith walking in the offseason. Look, before that, before that game, he was not walking in the offseason. Ravens ain't bring that dude over here to be like, hey, come over here, play like eight, nine games with us, and then you can go on about your merry way. We'll get our third round comp. No, Ravens ain't on no third round comp pick for no Roquan Smith. He ain't going nowhere. The panic button. Next question came from Terry. He said, What's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing great and well. I had a question for you. Uh, is it time to hit the panic button on Adafe away? Now, we have to take into consideration that the outside linebacker position was very thin heading into the start of the season. But since we started getting guys back, he still hasn't been making big plays. Um, what do you think we need to do for Adafe to get to killing? Well, we don't want to kill nobody, but just to, to get to playing better and, I guess, producing more. Uh, stay safe and keep going and trust. Mm, that's a good question, Adafe away. Um I would like to see how he does with Bowser all the way back. With Tyus Bowser all the way back, like playing a full game. Because I believe he is playing in Tyus Bowser's position. But anyway. Um, whew, it's just a matter of like finishing. Because he, he get a little pressures here and there. But it's just a matter of finishing. And just I, I, I think he just need to spend a lot of time with Justin Houston, man. Like straight up. He need to spend more time with Justin Houston. Like, be under his wing. Uh, uh, ask Justin Houston, like, look, please, man, teach me everything you know. Show me, show me again. Because I'm sure Justin Houston has had these conversations with him and stuff. Because Justin Houston is like, 
he um he seems to be one of those players, and we saw it from when they signed him last year. He seems to be one of those players that is a player's coach, um, because to where coaching is not their job, their job is to play. But you got these people that they know how to do their job, and they've been doing their job for a while. Uh, but they're willing to teach somebody else, um, who's on their same not on their same level, but I guess uh, they have the same sort of level of employment to where. They're an employee as well, but they don't mind sharing their tricks and trades and whatever with other employees, too. Um, so I think that's what it is with Justin Houston. Um, with Adop That's what it needs to be more with Justin Houston in a dot fair way. He just got to, like, really just take everything from him. I, I don't know exactly what it is with a dot fair way. I don't know exactly what it seems to be that's missing. Um, so hopefully they can really get it figured out soon. Graven was right all along. Ooh, this is probably going to be a little scary. Next question came from my guy, Sean. He said, hey, Graven, my name is Sean. Been watching your channel for around a year and a half after my dad put me on your channel. Hey, appreciate your dad, man. Thanks, pops. He said, hope you and the family are doing good. Well, hey, we doing really good, man. Um, you were right all along. The news uh, about Bateman, it came out, and it is going to have a big impact on the rest of the Ravens season. Uh, this is why I was right with you on the Ravens trading for a wide receiver at the trade deadline. Uh, the front office should have seen that DuVernay was doing better than expected, and Andrews, of course, is co continuing to do great things and said, we can get even better. This was a perfect time to provide Lamar with a wide receiver that he should have had for a long time. Injuries can happen at any time, and it was, and it has sadly happened to our injury-prone first-round pick. Uh, I just wonder how Lamar will feel about this and how this may affect whether he stays in Baltimore due to the fact that we cannot provide him the talent at the wide receiver position. I'm 50-50 about Lamar and whether he stays after this season. I know the Ravens want to be different, but the league is changing, and we should have changed with it a long time ago. I appreciate the videos, and keep being great. Oh, no, we are, we are not great at all. Um, but thank you for this and thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate it. And again, shout out to your dad, man, for, for, for putting you on. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is, it is what it is at this point. I, my, my hope going into this season, we, we said it all off season, stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready. Then that, that applies to so many different things, but with the Ravens, like they were ready as so many other positions on the roster, um, they had a, a lot of depth, a lot of depth at so many other positions on the roster. But at wide receiver, we, we had the conversation all offseason, man. What if, again, 2021 showed you, like, hey, after that year, like, what if, what if somebody gets hurt? You want to try to stay as ready as you could possibly get. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. What is, like, they running back. Offensive line can't can't get so much depth at quarterback, obviously, but running back, offensive line, tight end, boy, they got like eighty tight ends on the roster. Um, D line, outside linebacker, they went crazy with it. Cornerback, secondary, linebacker was a little, uh, but look, they got Roquan Smith now. So hey, look at that. They still had Josh Bynes over the the, the during the season. They signed AJ Klein, um, Malik Harrison, Christian Welch. Um, but their, their, their inside linebacker that was a little bit thin, um, but they went and got Roquan Smith. But at wide receiver, it was like, oof, what if one of them guys get hurt? What if? And now it's happened, and it's like, oof. So, hey, this this is, um, I mean, it's just a situation that the Ravens, they, they put themselves in. Um, so, I mean, you, you, of course, don't want or expect people to get hurt. You know what happens because it's football, unfortunately. Um, but I, I think they should have just been better prepared. Um, as far as Lamar, yeah, I, I, I told y'all before too. I'm, 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 I'm also like, I, I will be fifty fifty on him whether he stays, whether he goes. I just right now, I really just, I'm more leaning like, I guess less than fifty fifty. I'm more leaning to uh, the Ravens not giving him the big deal. I just, I, I still don't see it. I don't see them doing it. I think they should, but I just don't see them doing it. Um, but we'll see, man. We'll see. I uh, would love, 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 love for him to stay, but I don't know, man. We'll see how the business goes. Wow, it's 11.33 a.m. on Thursday morning, and my guy, Coach J, a patron, he sent this question at 11.32, so one minute ago. While we were doing the other question, he just sent it in, but he said it. Uh, Ain't Graven always enjoy watching the videos and hearing different perspectives from Team Keep It Clean. Yes, Team Keep It Clean be coming with the fire, man. But anyway, he said, I would like to take Team Keep It Clean on a dreamland journey. Uh, many people have talked about what Sean Payton 
said about him and Lamar being a free agent. Yeah, Sean Payton was like, oh, uh, one of the possibilities is is that I'm a free agent this offseason. No, Lamar Jackson is too. Uh, but anyway, he said, I'm quite sure this wouldn't happen, but would you agree that it would be deadly if the Ravens let g Rowe go and ask Sean Payton to be Lamar's offensive coordinator? I don't know about you, but I think we would run the tables with that pairing. What are your thoughts? I think um, Sean Payton is the offensive coordinator. Um, it, it, I think the Ravens could go crazy at that point. I think they will go crazy, but I don't think that Harbaugh would allow it. Reason being because Sean Payton uh, was once a head coach in this league, and it seems like he still wants to be a head coach in this league. And Sean Payton, he has a lot of respect uh, amongst the NFL as a head coach uh, in this league. So I, I feel like if Harbaugh were to hire uh, Sean Payton as an offensive coordinator, then there could be sort of a, a power clash um, to where – I don't. I just don't think Harbaugh would want to risk that. I don't think he would want to risk that because Sean Payton is a established name in the NFL. Um, he's not just some guy that's only been an offensive coordinator. And that no, he has been a head coach. Um, so and a Super Bowl winning head coach too. Yeah. So I, I just I don't think Harbaugh would go for it. But you did say Dreamland. You did say Dreamland. So uh, I, I uh, if they would now also if they were to bring in Sean Payton. Um, I think h how much would they clash? Like, I'm trying to get into the Dreamland scenario, but I just can't because um, the philo that would be a big difference in philosophy, right? There. They, they, things would have to change. Like with Sean Payton, because him as an offensive coordinator, especially how Harbaugh does with the offensive coordinator, he sort of seems as if the Ravens give the offensive coordinators their philosophy. Like, hey, this is what we want to do. We want to run the ball. That's it. With the passing game, ah, it's cool. We do whatever. We just as long as you're efficient. We want to. We want to run that ball. That's what we want to do. So with Sean Payton, um, he they do a lot. Of, they did a lot of passing under him. They they did do that running too now, but they did a lot of passing. Um, so I just feel like the the philosophies would crash. Apologies. Next question came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He said, "Hey, Raven, this is more of a comment than a question, but I want to formally apologize to the Ravens for being so pessimistic and ignorant to them like most people my age are." No, nah, don't 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 down yourself like that. Don't 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 do that, man. Uh, he said, "We might even have a better record than 12 and 5, and as Skip would say about the his Cowboys, how about them Ravens? We'll see. We'll see. We'll we'll see how things uh, shake out. They sitting at six and three right now, so they they are in very very good shape and a good position. And they're going into the bye week, so they got another opportunity to get healthy, to, to recover, to relax, to take some time off. Uh, so they in good shape right now. But hey, everything is up to them at this point. Next question came from my guy flirting the whiskey. He said, "Hey bro, hope all is well with you and yours. I feel superstitious at this point, so I got to send a mid game now. Look, man, the, the questions that you say, they ain't having no impact on the game." It's, it's okay, man. But anyway, uh, he said, I'm sending this right before half with that week cover two getting torched per usual. But anyway, Smith has been making plays, so that's great. Oh, Callaway just dropped a wide open touchdown. No surprise. Man, I had, um when we did our post game thoughts video, I had completely forgot about that. I had completely forgot about that uh that, that touchdown that he dropped. Because he, he caught, Mar uh, he caught uh, Marcus Peters slipping. He just beat him. And Marcus Peters just stopped. He just he just stopped on the route. And I know he was over, but he just stopped. Like, and the thing is, like, the 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 effort is. I don't know what's been going on, with Marcus Peters. It, it, it seems like his, his play been up and down, but I I, I don't know, man. It's, 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 I don't know, man. I don't know. But um, it's like we've seen crazy things happen. Um, when a, a, a player may drop a pass or something, or, or bobble it, and the defender end up catching a pick or something like that. So my point, you you can't give up on a play. You can't give up on a play. I think there was, um, was it Marcus Peters, as a matter of fact? It was in an Eagles game from like two years ago where the Eagles, I think running back, he they, they, they broke on the Ravens defense. He ran, 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 ran. And then I think Deshaun Elliott was chasing him. And Marcus Peters was running too. But um, something happened where I think Deshaun Elliott like knocked the ball. He forced a fumble. And Marcus Peters just... He had stopped, but had he kept running, then he could have recovered the phone. It was something. I, I forgot exactly what it was, but you can't give up on a play. But anyway, that, that wasn't, I didn't even had nothing to do with his question, but I just that just reminded me of that. He said, but anyway, my real question, do you think we need new talent scouts? I was thinking like, yeah, we hit with likely cool, but he was kind of a no-brainer. Other than that, not really. Uh, other, but other than that, not really. Um, 
But over the years, I realized how many picks we have and how many people we passed on multiple times. Like that kid Pierce, who's killing it in Houston. It's funny because he reminds me of Pierce that we had some times ago. Oh, but no, Pierce. Oh, okay now. Uh, or Woolen. Oh, Tariq Woolen, the Seahawks six four corner. That's the top five fastest player in the NFL. We passed on him a million times. You see, my my guy. Oh yeah, my guy JT. He, that 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 was his guy, man. That was his guy. Uh, whenever he be out there, you see him making plays. He's he's like, hey, he give me a nice reminder. Like, hey, I I wanted Ravens to get that guy. Um, and then, yeah, they passed on him. Um, so maybe like Ravens should like hire some of the team, keep it clean to be scouts or something. Cause, Cause y'all be on it, man. Y'all be on it like straight up. But anyway, he said, oh, even DK Metcalf. We have we have at least ten picks a season, but miss out on these players. DK and Woolen stress me out every time I see them play. Oh. Like, stress you out in a good way. Like, man, they'd be over there balling, uh, but they could have been Ravens. Ooh, I know that probably hurt your stomach every game. But anyway, he said, but why do you think that? We literally pick players we know don't fit us and won't be here, so why not just trade? <laughs> he said, we literally pick players we know don't fit us and won't be here, so why not just trade up? But, yeah, I'm out. I mean, yeah, Scott, the shout-out to my guy, Jamil. My guy, Jamil, he talked about this when, I, when we had him on, um, that the scouting – it, it it just could use some revamping because um, Ravens just seem to be missing out on guys. And, I mean, a lot has to do with your scheme and, and what you um, what your preference is and what your philosophy is and um, how you think guys will fit into what you do versus how they fit with those other teams and whatnot. But straight up, sometimes, if, if people can play, they can play. People sometimes it, it it may be character concerns or whatnot. It, it could be a lot of different things, but um, draft wise, Ravens do they 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 do got to do a little better. Um, and again, every year it seems that they've been improving. Ever since Eric DeCosta has been here, it seems every year they they're improving. They're getting better. They're getting better at draft. They're getting more impact from their guys. Um, and I think as of Kala getting put or Kola I, again, I mess up his last name all the time. I think Ravens, like, all of their picks are on the roster now. All of their draft picks are on the roster now. <laughs> because Kyle Hamilton, obviously. So, Tyler Linderbaum, because they had well, they, they had 11 this year. Tyler Linderbaum, um, Travis Jones, uh, Falele, uh, Jordan Stout, Jalen Alma Davis, Pepe Williams, um, Isaiah Likely. Uh, did I say Kyle already? I think I did, but... Who the other ones that I miss? I ain't, I ain't trying to take up too much time guessing all the draft picks, but I, I can't think of them off the top of my Oh, Beatty. Beatty's not on the roster. Beatty's on the practice squad. Um, so it's 10. Yeah, they got 10 guys on the roster. I, I forgot who the other ones are off the top of my head right now. Um, oh, David Ajabo. David Ajabo is another one. I guess I am going to take up the time thinking of it. I can't think of the other two that I'm missing right now. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's that. So with, um, with your question... Uh, yeah, they, 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 they got some work to do in the draft department, but they, they have been getting a little better. And then he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it. Well, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven? Right and graven. Shout out to Graven.